is Sports Kings Radio with Rob Calloway and Dean Reed. This is Sports Kings Radio News and Talk 1380 WAOK. Rob and Dean hanging out with you. And guess what, Dean Reed? What's that, brother? It's about to go down again, my friend. Another full house, but for a good reason, man. Yeah, a great reason. Uh, Terrell Davis, Hannibal Navies, and also... Dion Grant join us right now to discuss what they've got going on with 360 Football Academy and also Kaplan K-12, through who's famous for their test preparation business. So, Hannibal, this is your initiative. Tell us all about it. What we have going on with them is, is a tandem between athletics and, and academics, man. We really have, have built a year-round curriculum with, with Kaplan and really really initiative really to get these kids to understand that education is tied to the sport of football, man. And that's, and that's what this really is all about, is really letting them understand that it takes more than football to be successful in what they do. So Kaplan has come on board to really administer all the, all the things that are needed to get them throughout the year in the academic space. And we do what we do off the field and, and on the, on the, uh, I say on the gridiron to get them prepared for football. Now, how in depth is the program? I hear, you know, you've got some people, a uh, hundred people that attended last year. And I hear that it's blossoming out. What exactly would a young man, uh, go through when he's going through the 360 football program? Well, what it is, we did it last year. Our first one was last year at Georgia Tech. We had 100 kids. We had 25 All-Americans in that in that group. Um, what we do is a five-day on-site at Georgia Tech where they stay overnight. We want to get them the college experience and, and understand what that's all about. We also want to give them the training camp experience as well. So we, we spend twice practice twice a day in the classroom all day. Uh, bed check at night, but at the end of the day, when they leave there, you know they're getting, they're doing the, you know, the forty, the the bench press. But we do, you know, seven on seven. We practice as football practice, but at the end of the day, we're in a classroom learning financial literacy, uh, SAT prep, um, media training, so on and so forth to get these guys prepared off the field. And once they leave, they have a year round curriculum online that they have to keep up with live SAT. Uh, they have a live tutor, um, get their SAT straight, get their financial literacy straight, all that stuff. So we actually have a year-round curriculum time into that. So that's what it is. It's a comprehensive program. So you, you started out in Atlanta. Now you branched out to three cities, um, Atlanta, Dallas, and Baltimore. Why those cities? Well, Atlanta, this is our backyard, man. This is our home base. So that's, that's pretty obvious why we do it here. Uh, Baltimore, obviously, Ray is, is one of the owners of the company. So obviously, Baltimore is a big market for us, and it's a need for it, actually. You know, obviously, we know Baltimore uh, City is – is a, is a state where a lot of football players come out of, but the opportunities of some of these kids are being dropped because they don't have you know, the things off the field. So that's a big big test point for us to build a Baltimore. And Dallas is just such a foot, big football market, or Texas is such a big football market, that we felt it was important to get in there and get engulfed with them kids and get them prepared. News and Talk 1380 WAOK, Rob Calloway, Dean Reed, Sports Kings, being joined by Hannibal Navies, Terrell Davis, and Dion Grant, talking about the 360 Football Academy. Now, Terrell, you're involved in this. How does a program like this, uh, how much does it mean to you to give back to the community and the young Well, it, it means a lot because, uh, you know, we've seen the different um, programs when you come out of high school and the transition to college and then from uh, college transitioning to the pros where they prepare you for the on-the-field aspect of the game. Uh, this is the first program that I've seen that, that takes not only what you do on the field but off the field. Right. And, you know, I think it's it's la- it's kind of lacking uh, that was lacking in the in the marketplace. So what we've done is we've taken this program and not only giving you that experience on the field to make you a better football player, but we realize that everybody's not going pro. Right. And so we want to prepare you uh, for the, the best way to prepare you for life after football if it doesn't work out. I mean, really, it, it we have a social responsibility to our kids who are growing up to reach back, pull them up, and say, listen, we've been down that road before. And I look at it and say, if, if I had this program coming out, then I could have avoided a lot of right. mistakes as I was coming through the rank. Hannibal and I and, and Dion, we've seen the pitfalls. And so we have a responsibility to look back and say, hey, guys, this is, this is what's going to happen to you if you don't do X, Y, Z. Mm-hmm. You know, and we're speaking from experience. So for me, man, it's just been um, it's been something that I saw from day one. It's a funny thing that uh, Hannibal and I connected because I had the same concept in mind on the West Coast. Okay. And uh, we have a mutual friend in Byron Chamberlain who played for the Broncos who called uh, <clears throat> Hannibal, and we talked it over. And, and so our ideas were exactly the same. I said, man, you're doing exactly what I want to do. Let's get together and team up on this. So in two th- 2012, we're going to do the same thing in San Diego. Uh, where I'm from, and uh, you know, we want this thing to be nationwide, mm-hmm. and it's a it's a tremendous program, man. And I think w- you'll be a better man or woman. I think we'll do some other programs uh, once you leave this program. But we have a, we have a, a responsibility to our kids, man, to make this thing this thing happen. So of course, you guys are, are you know some some good dudes in the community, good brothers. 
Is this program geared more towards our community to, to actually help help our kids out that, that are, you know, possibly great athletes but just lacking academic geared more towards our community to, to actually help help our kids out that, that are, you know, possibly great athletes but just lacking academically because we know that a lot of times in school, especially in high school, the 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 football part gets put ahead of the academic part. So is this All more the time. <laughs> geared towards our kids or is just just geared towards the youth in general? I mean, answer that question, I would say it's, it's twofold. It's, it's built for football for students in general because that's what football is, but football is 90% black. Mm-hmm. So just by nature, we're going to be taking care of the kids that come from the communities that we're going to be serving. So, um, you know, football is always – in our community, football is a driving factor. We all – like you ask kids what they want to be, football, basketball players. So if that's what they want to be, we just got to lay it out for them. Instead of telling them they can't be that, tell them they can't realize that dream, just take that and let's use that as a tool to get them to understand that education is tied to that. So that's, that's what we do. I think us being former NFL players or active NFL players that are with us as well is really, you know, we walk that path so they really are receptive to what we have to say about that. So if, if that's a, you know, if, if they look at us as a, something that they're going to be more receptive to us and understanding and we talk about education and they get it, then we use the tool of football to, to drive that. So that's really what it is. All right, we're switching gears. Got to ask you guys, what do y'all think about the current lockout situation? <laughs> hey, you know what? <laughs> ask a uh, current player over there. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, I'm asking you no, guys. For, hey, for me, not- to, to be honest with you, um, you know, a lot of times I look at this situation and – it just depends on on uh, what your perspective is. I mean, as a player, I'm always going to be on the side of a player. I'm always going to say, man, I understand the struggle on that field. I understand that we put the most at risk. You walk on that field, man, you know, my injury was cut short. My, my career was cut short by a knee injury. There's no guaranteed money in football. So uh, at least it's not a whole lot. Uh, there is some. And then the owners sit over there, and they're making a ton of money, and yet they want to, they want to make more. So for me, it's you know obviously I'm always gonna side on the players about what's going what's what's happening. I think there's gonna be a deal done, uh, and if it it might even happen, it might even take until there's some games at stake before there's an actual deal uh, being put together. But right now, I think there are mediations again, and they're they're gonna ham- hammer something out. This game is way too big; it's too much money for for too many people uh, to make money. So don't, you can't kill the golden goose right now who lays that egg. So. I think there'll there'll be a deal done. I'm just glad it didn't happen while I was playing because it would have put me in that situation where I had to sue the NFL, <laughs> and uh, that's not necessarily what your boy was trying to do. Right. Hey, I know that's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, Some yeah. people, you know, hey, to be honest with you, you know, just like to have Tom Brady, whose name is on it, but I haven't seen Tom Brady at any of these meetings. Right, right, right. I haven't seen Peyton Manning at any of these meetings. Their names are there, but they're not out there on the front lines, mm-hmm. you know. And plus, these guys are making so much money that they're not the average football player exactly. who's making $300,000, who don't have that long-term deal. Like so, if they get the $60,000, shouldn't they pass that on to somebody who actually needs it? Well, I, I, I don't know about that. But, <laughs> but what I'm saying is that when you talk about guys who have to, they're, they're, they're one year in the league or they have two-year contracts, I mean, financially for them, man, it is a lot at stake right now. You know, the, you, you, so so it's it's a different perspective for for guys who are not making that kind of money, man. But for me, like I said, I look at it, I do pause and say, well, I'm glad I'm not I'm not playing right now. <laughs> Dion, what about you, man? I feel the same as um, TD. You know, um, now I've been going on what, eleven years, and you know, if I went in the position I'm in, as far as having a big time contract, I'd be hurt from it. Mm. You know, with the you know, a lot of people just look at. We're not getting a paycheck, but everything stopped. Right. You don't have a facility to work out, so that means you have to go and work out with a trainer. You have to pay them, but you don't got no money coming in. Mm. All the insurance plan and all that medical and all that has stopped. You got to go out there and get your own medical insurance. You know, they, we came up with you know, with the um, the PA came up with a great plan as far as getting us medical coverage and all that for some of the young guys. Okay. But you know, like T said, some of them guys coming in not getting a big time contract. You know, they they they're really getting affected by it. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's a selfish situation. Mm-hmm. You know, when you when you go in and see that they are hiding nine billions prepared right. for this lockout situation, nine just billion. Show, you know, and a lot of people understand that. You know, a lot of people are like, man, what's wrong with these guys? We need to go ahead and have this NFL season. But what they got to understand, we're not the one 
that came up with this lockout mm-hmm. situation. You know, my whole thing is, and it's been strong for the past three or four years, they just put too much into this game and changing it. Right. We ain't had no problem with the contracts that we had. So, you know, we just get back to what we what we got already or what we had, you know, initially. You know, we good. We'll start this football season. If not, you know, you want more game, it's pay us, you know, what we deserve. Right. Right. And I mean, it's just like uh, when Adrian Peterson, he walked out the meeting and made those comments. I mean, it was right off of him finding out that y'all don't have a job. So, I mean, just the way that the owner set it up, like you said, preparing ahead of time and the way they tried to corner you guys just just seems unfair. I mean, of course, the actual word slavery was a little bit much. But can you feel the sentiments that Adrian Peterson is saying, though? I mean, when you have so much things getting changed, when you get your whole thing going through college, dealing with, like T said, injuries. I, I'm, I'm, well, Hannibal, another one that got taken out the game because of an injury. Mm. You know, my first year in the league, I could have been in them shoes as far as um, an injury taking me out. You know, I came from a severe, you know, uh, recover with a broken hip and everything. Wow. So when you go through all them things and how much mm-hmm. bull they'll put in the game already, changing all the rules and all that, mm. especially different when I first came into the league, He's frustrated. You know, he's just frustrated. And then you take away the game. First right. you put all this mess in the game that we can't play the game the way we was taught growing up. And then you want to take the game away from us off a selfish act. You really can't You really can't um, blame a person for a statement sometimes. Totally agree, bro. All right. Wrapping up, Sports Kings Radio News and Talk 1380, WAOK. Ryan Medin being joined by Terrell Davis, uh, Deion Grant, and also Hannibal Navies. I've uh, got to ask you guys before we let you go. All the negative, uh, all the negative press that's been surrounding Cam Newton. What mm-hmm. do you, do you think? What do y'all think about this? I think that's. Uh, I think a bit of it is uh, Jamarcus Russell <laughs> uh, hangover. Yeah. You know, and Jamarcus did us a disservice, man. Um, you know, I think you, here's a young guy who came out of the SEC. Uh, you know, he had one one solid year, in my opinion, and played well. But I think, again, those are the kind of players that we're targeting with our program to make sure that when you get to that level that you've got all the tools necessary, not only as a good football player, but as a, as a human being. And I think Jamarcus was just purely into the game for the money. Uh, it was overwhelming to him. And he just, uh, you know, he, 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 didn't, he didn't take it. He didn't, he didn't do it right. But, uh, but Cam Newton, I think, is, is, start, is really – I think he's feeling some of the effects from that, to be, to be honest with you. Because here he is, another guy, played really one solid year in the SEC, SEC. you know, a black quarterback. National championship. A, yep, athletic guy. And uh, so I, I, I like the guy. I, I think he's going to be a great quarterback, man. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But uh, they need to just, you know, just kind of wait, man. Just everybody hold off on their, their uh, judgment of uh, Cam Newton. All right, Terrell. Uh, Hannibal and Dion, thank you guys so much for Good joining stuff us. What y'all doing, man. And, and really anytime y'all want to check in with the show, y'all, y'all always have an open door. All right, appreciate, appreciate it, thank it man. You, man. Thank you, thank y'all. All right, Dean Reed, very good stuff, my friend. Yeah, that's what it's all about, man. And the fact that, you know, it's a whole program. That's just about athletics. But academics, man, and how to get into the workforce in college, just in case football doesn't work out, I think this is something that needs to be in every city eventually. Or really every school. Yeah. Sports Kings Radio, News and Talk, 1380. W-A-O-K. It's Sports Kings Radio with With Bob Bob Calloway and and Dean Reed. Reed.